a few extra holes uh, on my triangular side flanges to put in just one or two more rivets. And uh, I, you know, I forgot to tell you about how to change the uh, your heads on your rivet gun. You have three different, uh, well, four on this one. There's about four or five different type of manual rivet guns that I saw in the different stores. You have very small uh, holes on the ends of them. And uh, they all fit in the handle. But when you want to change them out, you just unscrew them and uh, put it into the end over here, your, your, op your operating end. So see you have all, they have them on your, you have your heads on your, your gun. You can undo these from here. This is where you store them with your little, you have your little tool for, is that a hex? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. And they just tighten down to your handle. But anyway, you put your, your new one on top. And this uh, screws in by hand at first. Now, there's something you do. This is something for you to figure out. If you haven't ever worked a rivet gun that much, it'll be fun discovering it for yourself. But there's a hard way to put it in, and there's an easy way to put it in. I'm going to let you discover that, and I'd be interesting to see if you found out what it is. Now, this is for folks who haven't tried it before. Um, you know, you old timers, of course, you probably know what the secret is to getting those in real easy. But for the newbies, uh, write a note, make a comment. Let me know if you found out. When I found out, it was like, oh, kind of like the light dawned a little bit. Oh, that's that's cool. That makes my life a little easier, and anything that can make my life easier, I'm happy. Well, I drilled my hole for my uh, for another rivet over there, and I changed the head on my rivet gun to go to the uh, for the decorative rivets that I'm putting in, and it came out of the hole after I put it in, and I went. What the happened? And then I went, oh, dummy, you changed everything except for your drill bit. The last time you were using this, you were using it for the, for the big steel rivets. So, <laughs> so don't forget to change your drill bit, too. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Good one. Okay, we're installing the second shark bite on. This is the th second uh, three-quarter water, and this one is going into our bottom. My bottom. Uh, oh, there we go. The uh, bottom nipple, and I took the uh, duct tape off that has this the C for cold indication. We know what you want to see because that's how we oriented the tank. And we got to dope up the pipe here and then screw the nipple on or screw the attachment on the shark bite. And again, we're using that Teflon pipe dope. It does everything, it does a lot. Make sure it's mixed up really well. And again, I know I've said this before, but uh, you, uh, you avoid the first two threads. On your pipe. Because you can screw that down into your system. The, it can gravitate into your past your dielectric union right there. And get into your system. And that wouldn't be good with water or gas, I imagine. You know, this hot water is going to be going not only to the shower, but to your kitchen sink to do your dishes. I'm not sure how edible pipe dope is. <laughs> okay, that's nice and goopy. Or dopey. And 
you got your threaded end and you got your the bite end that's where the uh, three-quarter inch uh, copper pipe will go and I'm not sure but I think I might have some three-quarter copper pipe in the back I gotta go back there and see okay now I found my wrench rascal gave it back he was trying to build a better doghouse <laughs> I get some indoor plumbing on there. And being that I'm a good dog owner, I'm a good dog mom. I told him he could borrow it, but he has to wait till after I get this project got done. Then he can start his own. And just remember on this one also. That you don't back off the threads. You keep going in one direction as you're screwing it on. Because that ruins all that pipe dirt that you just stuck on the threads. This system is also going to be building up some steam in here. And I was reading one report and an engineer said that he thought that steam could build up to a thousand psi. Don't know. You know, since I'm not the expert, as I've been more than been very honest about, I kind of have to take the word of people who say that they are the expert. And, but I do read a lot. I research a lot before I do a project. Sometimes I get contradictory opinions about things. But for the most part, everybody's been saying the same thing about most things with this. Okay, now we go hunt for some copper pipe in the backyard. Many years ago, uh, Bill and I built this copper pyramid. We were um, experimenting with pyramid power just because we were curious. Well anyway, haven't used it in a long time and I'm thinking that maybe these are three-quarter pipes. I'm thinking I might be able to use that for my hot water box. This has been sweated together by me. That's why it's so messy. But uh, these pipes look basically intact. I'm going to bring out a measuring tape and measure the diameter of that and see if that's three quarter. Now, these are the pipes that I've rounded up so far from the metal yard and from the back. But these three look like stainless steel, ga galvanized. This is a copper one. Uh, this is from the pyramid, but that's too big, and these are too big, and I'm still looking to see if I can find a pipe that pipe uh, for this project. When Bill and I first moved onto the property, we threw some pipes under here. And I'm not sure what kind of pipes it is, but I'm going to go find out. I better take my spider stick with me.